so we'd like to start by setting up the reflex, right? We have a clamp that's supported or clamped to the back wall support. We have a heating mantle on a hot plate. We're really only using the hot plate to use its stir bar function. The heating mantle is going to be used to heat up the solution. Right, so we're actually going to plug the heating mantle. just like we did before to a dual control power outlet. Okay. That's going to be used to heat up the solution. So now the idea of setting up the hot plate on a jack is that we can lower it anytime we need to remove the solution from the heat source. The setup the condenser vertically, right? What we'll do is we'll attach the clear tubing for the water and you want the water to be flowing from the bottom of the condenser to the top because you want the cool water coming in to cool down the vapors from the solution. Sometimes you could put water on that clear condenser to kind of, you know, allow it to go right within the water, which is the green tap, right? and then water flows out from the top, so I'm going to hold this, and it goes right into the drain, which is right here. So now next what we have is the round bottom flask. We're using a 10 milli 100 milliliter round bottom flask and we're gonna attach it right to the condenser. Again, you want it at a height so that if you needed to remove the heat, you could very quickly remove the heat, the water from the, I mean the reaction mixture from the heat source. Okay. And what we'll need to do is grease the glass joints after we put in our reaction mixture. So right now, the setup is basically ready. So what we'll need to do is go and measure our starting material and place it in the round bottom flask. So let's do that. Okay, so now we're ready to add the solutions in our round bottom flask. I've measured out 15 milliliter of isoamyl iso alcohol and 20 milliliter of concentrated acetic acid and 4 milliliter of concentrated phosphoric acid. Alright, so we'll add. 15 milliliter of iso and we'll add 20 milliliter of concentrated acidic acid into the solution and then we'll go ahead and add our 4 milliliter of concentrated phosphoric acid which is acting as a catalyst and then we'll also need to add our stir bar. Before we raise um, the jack to clamp the round bottom flask to our condenser, what we'll need to do is grease the glass joints. It ensures that no vapors are escaping and it also makes it easier when we remove the round bottom flask. And then kind of do that. And then we'll add a keck clip. And the keck clip.
envelopes have you know a wider and a smaller side and the smaller size is right here the wider size is right here and all you do is really clip it on okay. now we can go ahead and raise the jack I haven't turned on the heat yet okay. I'm just gonna make sure the condenser the water flow within the condenser is working just fine and then I'll turn on the heat source all right so I'm gonna turn on the switch for the green knob which is for the water and you should see the water flowing steady flow of water and it is draining right here right into the drain okay so we can go ahead and turn the power on for the heating mantle and we'll go ahead and turn on the stir bar Again, the idea of using um, or heating up the reaction mixture under reflux is that the solvent won't really evaporate, so we won't need to be constantly adding in more solvent. Right? If you have a volatile solvent, that will evaporate under that temperature. So the reflux allows it to evaporate, and then the water condenser will condense it back down, and it'll fall right back into the solution. So it really allows the reaction to be um, at a temperature that is above or at the boiling point of the solvent itself. Okay. Or any of the comp components that have a low boiling point. be able to tell that the reaction has reached a reflux once we notice that the solution is boiling and that there is a condensation ring that formed. So we'll keep an eye on that. As you can begin to see, it's the formation of the condensation right within the round bottom flask. We didn't yet observe a condensation ring, so we can't really start the time of reflux yet, but we should be close enough now that we see the condensation on the round bottom flask. You may have noticed the formation of the condensation ring and how the condensation now is also going up onto the condenser, the sides of the condenser. So we can go ahead and start our time of reflux.
so now that we've allowed the reaction to reflux for 25 minutes, what we can go ahead and do is turn off the heat source and allow it to cool down to room temperature. So I'm gonna turn off this turbine and I will go in and turn off the heating mantle. And I will lower the jug Notice the round bottom flask is attached with a cat clip and is, you know, and the joints between it and the condenser are greased, so it really won't fall, right? So I can allow it to cool down as such. And we can go ahead and turn off the water condenser as well. Right? I'll allow it to run for another minute or so, the water condenser, and then I'll turn it off. Okay, so now that we've allowed the reaction to cool down to room temperature, we can go ahead and take the reaction mixture and put it in a separatory funnel. I'm gonna take the cap off, we're gonna make sure it's closed, and then we'll put it right within the iron ring. And what we'll place in it is 25 milliliter of DI water, approximately 25 milliliters of DI water. After we've placed the water, we can go ahead and remove the cat clip and slowly remove the round bottom flask. You want to make sure you don't actually end up putting the stir bar in the flask and the separatory funnel. So you can go ahead and remove the stir bar using another stir bar or just hold it in place. Okay, so I'll just hold it in place and then I'll go ahead and pour the reaction mixture into the separatory funnel. Okay, so now that we've placed the reaction mixture in here, along with around 25 milliliters of water. What we're gonna do is put the stopcock on, hold the stopcock on tightly, and then we can invert to mix and vent every few seconds. You wanna repeat this process for about one minute. Meanwhile, think about what are the two products that are present in solution once the reflux um, was, you know, after 25 minutes of reflux. And if you added water, what is likely to react with water or be more soluble in the aqueous layer? The whole idea of the liquid-liquid extraction is that you're separating molecules in solution based on their solubility in the aqueous versus organic layer. Right. So we can close it, we can carefully put it right back in here, we can take this top cog out and allow the two layers to separate. Okay, so now that we've allowed the layer to separate, we can go ahead and drain the bottom layer. And you could take a look at the two different layers. because it does contain the product of interest. And what we typically do is save our aqueous layer just in case we drain the, the wrong layer. All right, but we saw on a previous video 
how we could add a few drops of water and see which layer of the two layers does the drop, drop of water go into, which indicates it is the aqueous layer. We're actually going to use um, the same flask in a minute. All right. So next, what we'll need to add is 10% sodium carbonate in about 25 milliliters, and I have that. Do you want to gently swirl it to mix before we put on the stopcock and invert it to mix? Right? So you want to gently swirl to mix. Notice that um, it is producing carbon dioxide gas. Right? That's why you want to gently swirl the solution before you put on the stopcock and invert to mix, as well as that. Notice I'm holding it from the tip of the separatory funnel. Typically, um, you could mix, place it right, right back, or you can hold it from the tip, lift it, mix it, place it right back, hold it from the tip, gently swirl to mix, and place it right back. Okay, so now what we could do is place this topper and while holding this topper in place, invert to mix and immediately vent. Once we've allowed the layers to separate, we can go ahead and drain the bottom layer into the same flask that we drained the initial aqueous layer into. Wash it once again with another portion of DI water. I'm going to use about 25 milliliter of DI water. Right? And then I'll repeat the same process by inverting to mix and venting out. Right, and then allow both layers to separate. Once the layers have separated, we can go ahead and drain the bottom 
aqueous layer into the same flask. And we'll drain the top layer from the top. Right. The top layer does contain our product of interest, so we're going to use a 50 milliliter flask and we're going to drain the top layer from the tip of the funnel. All right, so we use anhydrous sodium sulfate, which is found in the desiccator, to dry out any remaining or excess amount of water. Great, when we have seen it before and how we use small dime size amount, and how we would like to close the bottle right away to avoid it absorbing moisture from the air. And recall anytime we add anhydrous sodium sulfate, if it clumps together, that indicates that it's being hydrated with water. And when it's free flowing, it is, you know, it tells you that all the water has been absorbed. So let's add some more. Definitely want to go in right away and close him. And then tilt the flask sideways and place in I'm just moving the solutions to the sides of the flask to get you know any of the sodium and hydrous that went on the side. You see that big piece that's clumping together, right? We have a few that are not necessarily free flowing. There are, you know, still clumping together. So it looks like it might need just a tiny bit more. So now that we've added enough sodium sulfate or anhydrous sodium sulfate, we can go ahead and you can see them free flowing. You, you may have also noticed um, that the solution was more opaque initially, right? it's a bit more clear at the moment. All right, so that's basically our percent yield, the volume. We're gonna use the volume of the final product to calculate our percent yield. All right, so I have a clean, dry, graduated cylinder that I'll use to decant the solution. And here's the volume of the final product. Okay, for the IR, we will use a disposable pasture pipette and add a few drops of our starting material right towards the center and then we'll come right onto the computer attached to the spec and we'll click skin so you do want to skin the background scanning the background is done. Notice this is the starting material that we had um, taken its IR a bit, a little bit ago, right? Um, and we took the background really on with nothing on it. And then we'll go ahead and use a glass pasture pipette to take a small amount of the product and place it right onto the reading plate. 
then we can go right onto the computer and click scan. It is taking its time. Now this is overlapping our peaks from the starting material and the product. So we'll click right here because really we would like to see the products. Perfect.